again, friends, and welcome back to my channel. My name's Amy, and I'm glad you decided to join me for another reading of the book I wrote, which is Legends, Orbs of the Elements. I hope everybody had a fun, safe Halloween. Um, I hope you got lots of your favorite candy. I hope you got to cool see cool decorations and... Um, dance to the fun Monster Mash song and see all kinds of fun, uh, spooky, fun things. We had three trick-or-treaters. Last year we had more, but oh well, that's how it goes sometimes living in an apartment complex. Um, as you can see, my background is Dia de Muertos, and I'm also wearing my Coco, Disney's Pixar Coco, uh, Minnie Mouse ears. Um, because I, I really like it. I love, uh, what Dia Morto celebrates. And so I decided to wear them. Um, yeah, let's just, uh, jump right into this video. Chapter 12. Castilia got off her horse. Leon began to feel an odd feeling in his stomach, almost like he was seasick. Castilia searched the area around her. Nothing was amiss. Be alert. Get ready to fight, she said with cold determination in her voice. Leon nodded. They trotted cautiously. Leon drew near to his companion and whispered in Castilia's ear, They are being followed. I'm sorry, we are being watched. No, nope, I'm just, I can't read today, excuse me. Leon drew near to his companion and whispered in Castilla's ear, we are being followed and watched. How many? Castilla asked in a steady voice. Leon shrugged, hard to tell. There are so many trees, but my guess, more than three, less than a hundred. Castilia was silent for a moment, then replied, Keep the orb close. Leon had packed it safely away in his backpack, which he now always wore. Leon saw some movement up ahead. He quietly nudged Castilia and moved his head to let her know without speaking. She understood. Leon's hair on the back of his neck began to prickle. The woods were too quiet. If, too quiet. It felt as though the forest was preparing for an unwanted attack. Whack! One of the horses hit. One of the horses was hit, and it let out a loud, panicked whinny. The short black arrow had hit Castilla's animal near the shoulder. She swiftly broke it, and another arrow buzzed by her like an angry wasp and hit Leon's steed. Now his horse let out a whinny of pain. This arrow struck the horse's neck. Before they could react, a mob of gnomes attacked. They had short swords. Cannibal gnomes! Castilia shouted. Leon notched his bow and fired quickly. Three gnomes lay dead, impaled by his arrows. Castilia used her sword skillfully. She parried to the right, parried to the left, ducked quickly, quick thrust, the second wave of cannibal gnomes now came and relieved the first, the first wave that had dwindled. It seemed like every gnome they killed, three more would spring up to replace them. Blood covered Castilia's hands and sword. The gnomes craftily tripped Castilia and brought her down. She kicked with all her strength. She swung her sword wildly and brought down many gnomes. Kill this one! Our master commands it! One gnome called out harshly to his comrades in arms. Castilia shouted at Leon, Get out of here! Protect the orb! Now go! Leon shouted, shot another arrow. No, I'm not going to leave you. Hang on! He shouted back and sh shouldered his bow and now drew his sword and fought like he had never fought before. Die, gnomes, die, he thought. Suddenly, a great eagle swooped and tossed one of the gnomes against a tree with a hard thwack sound. 
Then many more different birds of prey began to assist Leon. Then, in an act of panic, the gnomes dragged Castilla off, then vanished as suddenly as they appeared. Leon took in sight of what the mass number of dead gnomes. Their bodies sprawled everywhere. He threw down his weapon carelessly in search for his friend. She was gone! He sank to his knees in, in defeat. He felt the weight of the ages upon his shoulders. The eagle perched in a nearby tree. The other birds also perched in trees. Then the eagle flew down. As it did, the bird of prey turned into a tall, clothed man. He was dressed in browns and greens with hints of grays. Leon stared wide-eyed at him. The man had a calm disposition about him. He said nothing, but offered a hand to Leon. The hunter took it. As he did, he could see the man had bird feathers, bird feather tattoos on the base of each of his fingers. Welcome, hunter of the orbs. We have been waiting for you, he said at last. Oh, my ears are slipping. Leon glanced behind the man and noticed that the other birds had turned into their human forms. There were some women as well as men. I need to get my friend back. Thank you for your help, but I have to go, Leon said hastily, in a hastily reply. Then the man noticed that Leon had cuts and scratches on his body. My friend, we will assist you, but you best come with us and we will explain while we mend your wounds. Leon looked to the ground, then back to the man in front of him. All right, he said, releasing a deep sigh. He got on his knees and gathered up his weapons. The man led the way. Bridges and walkways were strung among the gnarled, huge trees. Balconies protruded out of the trees, almost as if, almost as they were an extension of the branch. The man turned to Leon. The hunter of the orbs learned that these people were called flyers. They had a special bond with birds long ago, with a bird long ago, and I'm sorry, they had a special bond with birds. Long ago, they repaired an injured bird of prey's wing and once recovered, released him back into the woods. In return, the bird granted them the gift of flight. They were also the inhabitants of the wood. Commoners and ungifted ones knew ones know to were known to all people were I'm sorry, commoners and ungifted ones uh knew about these people but were afraid of them. The leader of the flyer explained that Nero had imprisoned them, but the magic of the orb had released them. Leon had tried to absorb as much information to the flyer's leader was providing. Finally, Leon asked, This is all very interesting, but where did the cannibal gnomes take Castilia? The leader of the flyers had introduced himself as Oakland. He showed Leon to a room with a bed. Forgive me, I get off topic sometimes. They have taken her to their cave of shadows. His voice was full of seriousness. Leon came and plodded, plopped on the bed and put his hands on his face. Oakland had silver metal gauntlets around his wrists. They were ancient, there was ancient writings engraved on them. Oakland took a seat next to him. Leon, listen to me. We will get Castilia back by magic, but for the moment we can do nothing. Our healer will tend your wounds. We will rest and eat. Then, and only then, we will go get her back. This is not her day to die. Oakland's voice was full of resolve and wise. Leon brought his hands down and nodded. Thank you, Oakland. Hearing thanks made the leader smile. He patted Leon's back reassuringly. An old woman entered the room. She had many wrinkles on her face. Her hair was as white as snow. She carried a basket. 
Oakland now got up from the bed. I take my leave. He exited the room without a backwards glance. The old woman set the basket on the bed next to Leon. She just stared at him for an awkward moment before starting, before startling Leon by saying, Well, don't be shy. Lift your shirt up now while we are young. Leon did as he was asked and smiled at the old woman's words. Despite her age, the woman worked swiftly and accurately as one much younger than she. Leon hardly felt any pain. The old lady's smile, I'm sorry, um, as he was, um, Leon, as he was instructed to put his shirt back on, he spoke. Thank you. What is your name, dear lady? Oh, dear. Oh, my. Um. I'm sorry, what is your name, dear lady? The old woman's smile was almost hidden by wrinkles. My name is Nella. Leon planted a soft kiss on her cheek. May the elements smile upon you. She nodded. Leon got up and slowly walked to the door when he held it open for her. As he held it open as she left his room. When he was, when he made his way out of the room, he walked slow trying to locate L Oakland. The legend spotted the flyer, I'm sorry, the leader of the flyers spotted him first. Leon, are you feeling better? Oakland asked, in a way a father would ask a son. Leon quickly nodded. Yes, Oakland. The, uh, Oakland, there were two horses. Before Leon could continue, Oakland interrupted him. Rest easy. They and they and that water dweller are fine. In fact, they are being tended as we speak. Would you like to see them? Leon swiftly commented. Is it that obvious? Oakland smiled widely. Come, follow me. He led Leon down a long series of swaying bridges and platforms until they got to the ground level. In an area almost completely hidden by the naked eye was where the horses were being kept. Leon's brown chestnut horse trotted up to him. Leon stroked its forehead softly. The arrow had been removed and the wound was cleaned and stitched up. It would leave a scar. Oakland coughed. Leon, you must, you must understand this is a very dangerous time for us. With the Queen Witch on the loose, we can't afford to show ourselves for too long without her sensing we used our magic. Leon kept his eyes on his horse. Yes, once I get my friend back, we will leave these woods. Besides, we have to search for the orb here anyway. Oakland rubbed the back of his neck. I, I wish we could do more. Once Leon was satisfied his horse and little boy were all right, he and Oakland went back to where, back to, back and were getting things ready. Leon noticed only the warriors of the flyers had gauntlets like Oakland's. Leon took a seat and set to work cleaning his sword. A male flyer about Leon's age came by and silently handed him a bundle of his arrows. When the male flyer walked away, Leon spoke softly to himself. Hold on, Castilia. Hold on, we're coming. So that is all the chapter for today. Thank you, thank you so much for listening. If you like this book and want to read it on your own or read along with me, it can be found on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, Apple iBooks, and lots of other places books are sold. Sorry, my head fell asleep. Um, if you are also interested in reading more about the more sort of behind the scenes of how I wrote the book and how I got backstories for some of these characters and their names, I also have a Facebook website dedicated to this book. It is where I try and write an article Monday through Friday about different aspects and characters of my book. 
I try not to have any spoilers so you can um, read along with me and not be spoiled but find out more fun facts. Kind of like how um, I came up with the name of Leon and Castilia. Uh, another fun article I wrote is about the villains of my story. So things of that nature. Um, yeah, I just absolutely love reading this book. I hope you are enjoying hearing it. Um, again, if you like this video, please give it a big like, subscribe, share with friends and family, and I will see you guys soon with my new video and the next chapter. Bye-bye for now, everybody.